Welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. Are you over 40 and tired of struggling with your weight? Do you feel like you're constantly starting over with your nutrition and fitness? I'm Lil, a certified nutrition coach and former registered nurse, and I too have been there. At the age of 44, I decided I was done with being stuck in the vicious diet cycle. I became a nutrition coach and created the Feel Your Best formula for women who are ready to do things differently. If you're ready to build a better relationship with food, get your energy back, build muscle, lose fat, and keep it off for good, then you're in the right place. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's build your formula for feeling your best. Hello, welcome to the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. I'm Lil. And today I'm really excited to go over 10 rules for stepping into the new and improved version of yourself. I thought this was a great time to talk about this because summer is coming. For those of us with kids in school, maybe you are already transitioning into a summer schedule or if you're like me and you're in Massachusetts, we have a whole other month ahead of us for Um, the regular kids, my senior, his last day of school is going to be this week as you're listening to this. But this is such a great time to start making change. And I know that even as someone who has really solid habits in place, there is a shift. I have a way I do things during the school year because of the commitments and obligations, responsibilities you know, look a little differently during the school year. And then in the summer, things are structured differently. And coming up with how you ideally would like your day and week to go can be really helpful in understanding that there's going to be a shift and actually creating a new ideal schedule for yourself versus trying to continue the same things that were working for you can that can be really helpful the other thing is if you're starting from scratch this is an incredible time to have a fresh start And you might want to write these down and take notes or come back and listen if you're driving or doing chores or something like that, or make yourself a little voice memo as you go through these, because I highly doubt that all 10 of these things will apply to you. I do think that some of the things I talk about here, there's going to be something that you just think to yourself, oh man, I really need to highlight this and remember it and take it with me as I move forward. And when I'm talking about rules, let me just say, I'm not a super rigid person. I feel like it's always about walking that line, that balancing beam between discipline and flexibility And life is constantly about trying to make the best choice in the moment. And sometimes the best choice is to sleep an hour late. Sometimes the best choice is to wake up and do that workout. Sometimes the best choice is to eat a salad and, you know, really think about what you're eating and trying to make sure you're getting a ton of nutrients in your body and eating in a way that is in alignment with your long-term health. And sometimes it's about having a big old ice cream sundae and just enjoying that experience. So the right choice is not always going to look the same at every point in time. And it's really about trying to create rules and and guidance for yourself so that you can hopefully feel empowered to make the better choice, the the best choice for any particular moment in your life. And I think one huge problem that I have with diet culture is that they give you rules that you're supposed to follow no matter what that moment looks like in your life. And a lot of times we can think that that is 
easier. You know, if you're on a diet that says you can never eat gluten and dairy, then it, you might think to yourself, well, that's just going to make it easier for me. But you might find you're in a, yourself in a situation where you don't have any other options. And if there's no medical reason that you should not eat gluten and dairy, then you should have just eaten the gluten and dairy and not had any shame, guilt, or feeling like you did something wrong because you did that. So that's just one example. There could be millions of examples of these types of decisions. And I'm hoping that these rules that I talk about are empowering and help you realize that yes, having discipline, very important to get you to your goals, but also understanding nuance and having flexibility is the key to making things sustainable. Okay, let's dive in. First, this sounds pretty rigid, but okay, I'm one of those people, if I'm not early, I'm late. And my number one rule is to be on time, which means being early and being prepared. And why this is so important for stepping into the new and improved version of yourself, you have to understand that this has a ripple effect and it carries over into self-responsibility and self-accountability because you want to make sure that you are setting aside time in your life for these new habits, for doing things differently, maybe adding in fitness when fitness was not part of your schedule and understanding that being on time, being prepared is going to decrease your anxiety. So doing things like scheduling things in your calendar, setting yourself a reminder. If you have to physically be at an appointment, set a, set a reminder to yourself, understanding how long it's most likely going to take you to drive to that appointment so that you're giving yourself enough time especially if you're someone that wants to work out later in the day, then being on time for everything else in your life that comes before then is going to make it much easier for you to get that workout in. But if you're trying to get your workout in before work, then you got to be on time for your workout. You got to set that appointment and you got to keep it with the same accountability that you would hold to getting to a doctor's appointment. So I'm saying be on time, be early, be prepared, meaning make sure you have everything you need for whatever it is you're showing up for. Are you showing up for a work meeting? Are you going to a medical appointment? Are you going to an appointment with your kid's school? Anything you can do to eliminate chaos, delaying things, um, things that are going to throw your whole day off, it's going to make it much easier for you to be this new and improved version of yourself. So if you're someone that struggles with those types of things, there's so many resources out there, you know, doing things like wearing an Apple watch, looking for strategies on being more organized and being on time. Because I think that this can be something that really hinders people's abilities to stick to the plan that they make. And you could have ADHD, you could have something going on that, you know, getting some expert help, some executive functioning issues, things like that. Um, you're never too old to address those things because once you get a handle on you know, those automatic habits that create chaos in your life, then you can start to find peace and order and really start to thrive. Okay, number two, understanding that habits create your life. And the rule is, I really need you to be honest about how your habits today are creating your life tomorrow. For example, your blood work might be totally fine today. Yeah, but is it going to be fine in five years? Having excess body fat and being obese today may not look like a problem on paper, but the truth is as time goes on, your body can only handle so much stress and inflammation and issues that having excess body fat create in your body. Our bodies are amazing at coping and 
you know, thriving even when they are not getting the best support. But there comes a time when your body is going to wear out and it's going to be an alarm that goes off. And being honest today about the foods that you're eating and the way that you're moving your body and your mental health, if you were to continue on the path that you're on right now, what is that going to look like when you're 50, when you're 60, when you're 70? Are you going to make it to 80? And being honest about that, because putting your head in the sand or thinking that you're special and the rules of pathophysiology, you know, disease in the body and illness in the body are not going to apply to you is not a great way of looking at things. I think you have to look at the law of averages and the fact that not working out, the fact that if you're losing muscle and not actively trying to stay strong and keep your cardiovascular health in check and all of those things, it's going to catch up with you. And I think that all of us would love to live a long life as free from regret as with the, with the least amount of regret possible. And I know that I don't ever want to look back and think, oh, I could have done just a little bit. And I know that can be daunting to create new habits. You know, maybe you come from a family where people don't take care of themselves and they smoke and they drink and they eat food that is not doing anything helpful for their body. So you don't have to be them. You can decide at any point in time to make change and start taking care of yourself, but you have to be honest. And anytime I start making excuses for myself or others, I know that's a time to really get honest about what their behaviors and actions are telling me, whether it's about myself or someone else. Someone, I was recently talking to someone who was helping me through a problem. And she said to me, she said, do you realize how many times you just made an excuse for that person's behavior when they had very unacceptable behavior? And I thought, oh my goodness, I was making excuses for them. And sometimes we do that for ourselves and we try to make a case for why the rules do not apply and we shouldn't have to do the things that we know we need to do. So It's a great rule to get honest about yourself and ask yourself, if I continue to do what I'm doing today for the rest of my life, how are things going to turn out for me? And if focusing on weight loss is holding you back from starting new habits, I would say take weight loss off your goal, your list of goals, and instead focus on outcomes and goals that don't have anything to do with the number on the scale. So if that's a reason that it's, that's holding you back is that, you know, mental impact that it has hoping that the number on the scale is going to go down. How about we just start some healthier habits and forget about what the scale says for now? Okay. Number three, this is a great rule, and I know that inherently some people are very opposed to it, but one rule that I live by is boring is best. And this might sound crazy to you, but once you start finding patterns, routines, and repeatable decisions that really work for you, your life becomes so much easier. I talk about decision fatigue on here and how decision fatigue is a huge hindrance to people wanting to reach goals because they constantly feel like they have to make these decisions. There's too many decisions um, on their plate, uh, too many options, and we get burnt out. So as many decisions as you can make that are sort of pre-made decisions, for example, Every time I go to Chipotle, I know exactly what I'm ordering. I don't have to think about it because I know that this particular order is going to match my calorie and macro needs, and I know that I'm really going to enjoy it. 
And some people feel that there is excitement in constant change and some people thrive in chaos or think they thrive in chaos, but there can also be excitement found in monotony and a boring life because a boring life can actually not be boring because it allows you to dive deep instead of wide. For example, if you are someone that has really great deep relationships with a small amount of people, that can be just as exciting as having very shallow, um, you know, un, I don't know how to say undeep, I guess shallow, with a lot of people, you know, you might know a ton of people a little bit and that can be exciting or you can get to know a few people very deeply and that can also be exciting because there can be such depth of experiences and trust and emotions when you really know people really well and you can trust what that relationship means to you and you can have expectations. Whereas if you have shallow relationships with a large amount of people, you don't get to know them well enough to really know what your expectation should be. And it might sound boring to be married to someone for decades and decades, but if you're married to the right person, it can be very exciting. Some people think it's more exciting to date a lot of people and have a lot of drama and change when it comes to relationships in their lives. But Diving deep into specific habits and things that you like can really help you become an expert and understand yourself better and help you understand what you really and truly enjoy. And it can help you create sustainable habits because in order for something to be sustainable, it has to be easy. It has to be brainless. It has to be something that you can just automatically do. And it's really hard to do that if you're constantly changing things. For example, I buy a lot of the same groceries at the store every week. And it's just really simple. I know I need broccoli. I know I need chicken. I know I need ground beef. I know I need tomatoes. I know what fruits that we like. We don't vary too much from our grocery list every week. And even though I don't cook the exact same things every week, I know that foundationally, these are the foods that work for us and I don't have to guess. So boring is best. And I know that people can think that sounds unexciting, but having peace, calm, understanding what you do and do not like and diving deeper into the things that you do enjoy can be so satisfying and help you easily reach your goals. Whereas if you're constantly flitting from one thing to the next, maybe one workout program you're doing for a few weeks and then you switch to another workout program, you're not giving your body time to get stronger and strength is built through repetition. You could literally do the same exact strength training program for the rest of your life and you would get amazing results. There is no benefit from moving around and doing one program here, one program there. And if you are getting bored, then I would say, then you're probably not seeing results. Because once I started doing the boring thing and doing the same workouts over and over, what got really exciting was the outcome and seeing how strong I was getting and seeing how beneficial it was to be repeating the same thing over and over. So of course there's room in our lives for excitement, but the more things you can put on autopilot and keep boring, that's actually going to create more room for excitement and change and moving towards goals in your life that you're working towards. Okay, our next rule is making the mindset shift to understand when we are not winning, we are learning. And this is a big one. Anytime 
we feel rejected or we don't get the outcome that we want. It can feel like that goal that we had and not reaching it. It can feel like we're losing. But I've learned it's so much more helpful to look back and ask myself, what did I learn along the way? When I was doing triathlons, I had no aspirations for coming in first place. That absolutely was never going to happen. But I learned so much during the training and just trying to see how I could do. There was no losing, even though technically I lost because I wasn't, you know, I didn't win any awards or anything like that. But it's the journey, the process, the things that you learn about yourself as you embark on a new goal or adventure, that is where the magic happens. And if you're going to beat yourself up, every time that things don't go your way, then you're not seeing the forest for your for the trees. You're not seeing what that experience in life is there to teach you. I think back on all those experiences that I had trying to lose weight, trying to get skinny. And now I realize the lesson I should have learned a lot earlier is that that wasn't the road that was going to lead me to success. And when I finally realized, you know what, constantly chasing skinny and trying to get to a certain number on the scale isn't actually moving forward in my life, I was still able to take certain pieces, certain nuggets of information, certain things that I learned about myself and bring that with me, even though I moved in a new direction. So you're always learning even when things don't turn out your way. And I would say you probably learn the most when things don't turn out your way. And struggle and obstacles, they are put in your path as an opportunity to learn what really is going to feel like a win for you. And I personally feel that the process of learning and growing is the biggest gift we can give ourselves And if you just set a goal of saying, oh, I need to weigh 120 pounds and I'm going to do whatever it takes to reach that goal and you put your body and your minds through hell on the way towards that goal and you reach that goal, that's going to be an empty win. And instead looking to, you know, enrich your life and really see what you can bring with you on this new version of yourself, that is the most important part of the journey. There's always something you can learn along the way. And you might not realize it until something doesn't go your way, that that is the lesson that you need to learn. Okay, let's move on. I don't even remember what number we're at now, but the next rule is being okay with understanding not everything is meant for you. Trends come and go, and sometimes you'll see your friends or family really thriving with the latest trend. And this kind of goes back to a boring life, sometimes being best, because if you're constantly chasing the latest trends, you're not giving yourself time to dive deep and really figure out what's going to work for you. For example, everyone got really excited over, I don't even know how long it's been, seven years, something like that, since Peloton started to get really big. People started, you know, doing their spin classes at home and buying bikes and adding that to their home gyms and things like that. And I just knew it wasn't for me. I had people inviting me like, hey, we can ride and we can do rides together and like all this stuff. And I've been to spin classes and I I was into that for a while. And I just realized that biking is not something that I want to do as far as structured fitness. I'm very happy in the summertime to get on my bike and, you know, take a little ride around the lake or whatever. That's the level of biking that I want in my life. And sometimes we can get sucked in to putting time, energy, money into things that deep down, we just kind of know it's not something that we want to stick with. 
I remember when Zumba was really big and I had people inviting me to go to Zumba classes and I was like, that is great. I love that you're doing this, but it is not for me. I want to get my cardio in through other means. So it can feel sometimes like we're alone or that there's pressure for us to just do what everyone else is doing, especially when it comes to health and fitness. But I encourage you to really ask yourself, what do I enjoy? And yes, there are, we're going to talk about this in the next rule, but you're going to have to do some things you don't enjoy um, unless you happen to be someone who really, really loves doing lifting weights and doing cardio. Uh, Both of those things are required for your overall health and not, I don't love cardio, but understanding that just not everything is for you and it's okay to set yourself apart, do your own thing and take that responsibility for figuring out what works for you because that's our next rule. It's your responsibility to find what does work for you. You have to accept that there are some facts of life and science that, guess what? You are not special. You cannot escape these laws, just like you can't escape the law of thermodynamics when it comes to calories in, calories out. Yes, you're, if you want to be healthy for the long term, you need to find a way to strength train and you need to find a way to take care of your cardiovascular health and you need to find a way to nourish your body with the macro and micronutrients that it needs to thrive. It's going to be a combination of all of these things that work together to help you live a healthy life. And you... Even if you don't like the first thing that you try, say you sign up for a boot camp or you do some sort of workout and you don't like it at first, you got to give it some time because sometimes what you don't really like is the fact that you're sweating or you're working hard or you're sore and you got to get through those first few weeks to the point where you're actually starting to feel the benefits and feel differently before you can decide, hey, I don't like this or I don't like that. And it's going to take time. You know, I've done all kinds of fitness over the years. I've tried all kinds of things. And I finally landed on the fact that number one, I need to work out at home. I have no interest in adding extra time to my life to drive somewhere three or four days a week. I definitely could go to a yoga class or a Pilates class or something like that once, you know, once a week or once in a while. But in order for me to create consistency, it is just so much easier for me to have everything I need in my home. I also figured out that I really, really, really love lifting weights. And there's, you know, I love certain workouts that I keep finding myself going back to. And I love working out four days a week. That is my sweet spot. But I didn't just wake up one day and have this all figured out. It took years for me to get to this point where I haven't really changed much in the past couple years. It's been pretty much the same thing week in and week out. But it took me time to get here. I didn't have the confidence at first to work out at home or even know what I needed to do. So I went to a gym. I did small group training. I did TRX classes. And I just did all kinds of things. I wish I'd had someone who could have helped me make those decisions. It was just a huge, you know, bunch of trial and error decisions on my part. But I took responsibility for understanding that these are the things I needed in my life and I had to figure out a way to make that as easy as possible so that I wouldn't have, again, any regret at the end of the day that I wasn't doing what was best. And if someone had said to me, the only way to be healthy is to go to spin class three days a week and strength train four days a week, I would have given up because that would have been overwhelming and too much for me. And instead, I found that sweet spot, that balance that really works for me. And you can too. You've just got to take that first step and have an open mind, yet a commitment to finding what works for you. 
Okay, next, this is such an important rule and is more for your mental health, but learning not to take things personally. I'm going to tell you, people don't change, whether you're in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, an adult, or even in a retirement community. (laughs) People are the same. There is gossip. There is drama. There is people having opinions of you. There are people who are insecure and going to say nasty things. It doesn't matter what walk of life you are in. These things exist. And if you have not read the book, The Four Agreements, I highly, highly recommend it. But one of the four agreements, rules for life, is not to take things personally and understanding that the things that people, things other people say about you says more about them than you. Insecurity runs rampant and you can engage in drama and negativity, or you can recognize that it's actually not about you and nothing you do or say to respond is actually going to lead anywhere good. And walking away from drama and getting involved in all that type of stuff usually doesn't lead anywhere good. And once you learn to not take things personally, and believe me, it can be hard. You know, I, as someone who's online, people say nasty things to me. And it took me a long time to just really understand someone leaving a nasty comment on a recipe or a blog post or something like that. Um, It's really just that that person is in a place in their life where they feel the need to put out negativity in order to make themselves feel better. Now, of course, there is constructive criticism. We have to be aware that we are not perfect and we have to be able to take constructive criticism, but there is a big difference between gossip and people being nasty versus someone giving you actually constructive feedback. So learning not to take things personally can just have such a huge positive ripple effect, especially when you're coming to make decisions about your health and wellness and deciding what you want that to look like for yourself, because people are going to have lots of opinions. And no matter where you're starting off, you want to be in a community where you feel welcome, where you where you feel supported, and whether that is in your own home or joining a gym or some type of studio. If you don't feel that way, you should also feel free to leave that space so that you can be in in a situation where you feel supported in your goals. Similarly to that, I want to say it's a really great rule in life to start before you're ready. I was working with one of my brand new clients last week. And we had our kickoff call where this is a 30 to 45 minute call where we walk through getting you set up and just taking those first steps. And I had said to her, you know what, just get your app set up, be aware that, you know, these are your numbers and these are the goals we're working towards. And, you know, you can start today. You can start in three days. Just start familiarizing yourself with the process. Well, the very next day I went into her account and I saw she started tracking that very next day. Here she is a total beginner. All of this is very new to her. And she just started because she has the understanding that she's going to learn as she goes and it's not going to be perfect. And if she waits for everything to be perfect, she's going to be left behind and she's going to be so much further behind than where she is just starting in in per is it imperfect imperfectly and i just smiled because i know she's going to be successful that is what it takes just having just enough information to take that next step and you don't necessarily need to have the whole picture painted for you start before you're ready if you're waiting for the perfect time it's never going to come and next month next year you're going to be in that exact same spot that you are today listening to this podcast next is really important If you are truly ready to step into a new version of yourself and do it effectively, you have to be coachable and you need to ask for help. And by being coachable, yes, you can hire a coach, 
But also, if you're doing things on your own and figuring things out on your own, then you have to be willing to take the advice that you're getting. And part of that is realizing that some things that you think you know, that you think are factual about nutrition and fitness, things that you've brought with you over the past few decades, a lot of those things are simply not true. And if you want change, then you have to be open to new information and taking new and different action. One thing I look for when I get on a call with a new potential client is if they're going to be open to a no appro- new approach or are they simply trying to hire me to do things their way? And that's not going to work. If you want to work with me, you have to be willing to take my guidance, take my advice, do things differently and understand it's a collaboration where, yes, you're willing to be guided, but you also have to be part of the process. So be coachable. Don't be stuck and keep saying things like, you know, keto is the only way to lose weight, um, you know, or again, being focused on skinny, being the only outcome that is going to make you happy. If you are not coachable, then you're just going to keep getting the same results by doing the same things over and over. Okay, we're on our final rule, and I'm putting this out there for all the moms, all the caretakers, those of you who are listening who need to learn to say, No. And I get it. I have been a people pleaser much of my life. It's really only been the very recent, present and past, like just couple years that I really started putting up boundaries and saying no. And if you are really ready to improve yourself, a lot of that requires saying no. It means saying no to volunteering for every single thing that you're asked to do. It means saying no to certain social events that you might get invited to. It means saying no to people in your life that you might have a long history of saying yes to. But a lot of things that we say yes to are actually holding us back from moving forward into a new version of ourselves. Doesn't matter if it's family, if it's friends, if it's your job, you have, you only have so many hours in the day. You only have so much time and energy that you can devote to all these different buckets in your life And something's got to give if you want something new. And I know that can be hard. So if this is the one thing you needed to hear today, then I hope you hear me that it's okay to say no, that the world is not going to end by you saying no. And in fact, your world can change when you start saying yes to new and different things. Okay, so let's review. I'm going to go over this quickly and then we're going to be done and um, I will see you back here next week. But number one, be on time, be early, be prepared, be ready to create the space in your life and give your new habits the respect that they deserve. Number two, understand that your habits create your life. So be honest about where your habits are leading you. Number three, boring is best. Find patterns in routines that you can repeat to make those healthy habits easier so that you can have room for excitement and enjoyment in other areas of your life. Number four, understand that if you're not winning, you're learning and that can be just as important as reaching that goal that you think you wanted. Number five, understand that not everything is meant for you and chasing trends and what everyone else is doing is not necessarily the best way to create the outcome that you want in your life. Number six, it's your responsibility to find what does work. So make that commitment to yourself, make that rule that you're willing to do what it takes and to try new things, even if it feels uncomfortable. Number seven, don't take things personally. Number eight, start before you're ready. Number nine, 
be coachable, and 10, learn how to say no. Okay, I hope this list of 10 rules helps you start moving towards that new and improved version of yourself that you came here to find. As always, you can reach me through the links in the episode details. And now there's actually a way that you can text me and it's right up at the top. And if you hit that button, you can actually send me a message if you have any questions or comments. Okay, have a great week and I will see you back here next Monday. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast. If you enjoyed the information and discussion we had here today, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. If you're serious about making changes with your nutrition and fitness, then you definitely want to join my weekly newsletter list as well. You can find the link below and more information in the episode details. That's all for today, and we will see you back here next week for a new episode of the Feel Your Best Formula podcast.